Hello there. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. I'm Ryan in Singapore. Welcome to our mindfulness practice. So we're, what we're doing is the 10 bowls of Zen, uh, as we have been doing for uh, the last five sessions. Uh, and what I'm going to try to do today is, is kind of get the last, the last five wrapped up. So I've been doing one per, one per session. Um, we'll see how far we get today. But the idea is to try and get through a few, a few more of them because uh, we're moving into this area that I, I would guess that less of us are familiar with, which is uh, significant, uh, at least from bull six to bull ten, there's already a significant understanding of self that, that is implied in the rest of these. So, uh, so with them being a little bit more unfamiliar or less familiar with us, um, and instead of spending a long time doing commentary on each one and how they relate to us specifically, uh, I'll just go ahead and go, th go through them. So, hello everybody. Uh, we, yeah, we'll get started with well, where we were last time was taming the bull. And so now from, from taming the bull, and I guess just very quickly, I'll go through what are, what are the, each, of the, each of the steps. So the first step is the search for the bull. Second step, discovering the footprints. The third step, perceiving the bull. Fourth, catching the bull. Fifth, taming the bull. And now we're on riding the bull home. Uh, and so riding the bull home, here's the, here's the picture that goes along with it. And I can say that, um, interestingly, this was, on, this was on one of my old business cards, this picture. So this is riding the bull home. Uh, riding the bull home is uh, well. Here's here's the com here's the poem and the commentary on it. Mounting the bull, slowly I return homeward. The voice of my flute intones through the evening, measuring with handbeats the pulsating harmony. I direct the endless rhythm. Whoever hears this melody will join me. A comment from Zen Flesh, Zen Bones. This struggle is over. Gain and loss and are assimilated. I sing the song of the village woodsman and play the flutes to the children. Astr uh, astride the bull, I observe the clouds above. Onward I go, no matter who may wish to call me back. And then, um, and then the, next, uh, the next piece, the bull transcended. Here's the picture that goes with the bull transcended. <clears throat> so it's just the, you know, just the, the me uh, at home by myself. And the, the commentary that goes with this one is, is this. Astride the bull, I reach home. I am serene. The bull too can rest. The dawn has come in blissful response within my thatched dwelling. I have abandoned the whip and rope. Comment, all is one law, not two. We only make the bull a temporary subject. It is as the relation of rabbit and trap, of fish and net. It is as gold and dross, or the moon emerging from a cloud. One path of clear light travels throughout travels on throughout endless time. And so uh, one, one, more, uh, one more commentary. So the taming of the bull is, is here in the gradual dissolution of our ego nature into pure consciousness or God's being until f it finally merges into the ultimate self within. This dissolution or merging is what the picture riding the bull home represents. The return homeward, there is no more searching. A harmony and naturalness descends upon the herder who is now riding the bull effortlessly, playing his flute. There is no more to it. As Chongyam Trungha, Trungpa Rinpoche remarked, there is a point which, when there is no more bull, that is what the bull transcended is about. In Lily Marie Johnson's words, the world of samsara is experienced as it really is, nirvana. Then perfect unity of all things, including yourself, appears effortlessly. 
and here's uh, Xu Yun, uh, Buddhist Zen master. But in the end, all things return to the one. The deaf and dumb, the crippled and deformed are all restored to one's perfection. Okay. So we'll, uh, we'll continue to the, the next piece. Again, this is all from 12th century uh, Buddhist poem, poetry and imagery. I know that I'm a secular mindfulness teacher, but I, th I thought this would just be kind of fun to go through. Uh, the next piece is both bull and self transcended. And again, here's, I, I just, I love some of this imagery, right? So here's the image for both bull and self transcended. The poem is whip, rope, person, and bull all merge in no thing. This heaven is so vast, no message can stain it. How may a snowflake exist in a raging fire? Here are the footprints of the patriarchs. Commentary from Zen Flesh, Zen Bones. Mediocrity is gone. Mind is clear of limitation. I seek no state of enlightenment. Neither do I remain where no enlightenment exists. Since I linger in neither condition, eyes cannot see me. If hundreds of birds strew my path with flowers, such praise would be meaningless. Now we come to the drawing, both bull and self transcended. This is represented by an empty circle. All has fused itself into nothingness. Unity is all that exists, said Alfonso uh, Carosca. Or as an old Zen master, Guishan Dan, from the 9th century remarked, in the Dhamma there is nothing attained. If anything is to be attained, that is, uh, it is that nothing is attained. We are back to the beginningless beginning. And this is what reaching the source means. So, um, let's see, how are we doing? Okay, not too bad. Uh, reaching the reaching the source. I'll, I'll, I think I'll just go ahead and finish finish these, even if I run a little bit over. Okay. So reaching the source. Here's the here's the tr the picture. <clears throat> reaching the source. Too many steps have been taken, returning to the root and the source. Better to have been blind and deaf from the beginning, dwelling on one's true abode, unconcerned with that without. The river flows, tranquility on, and the flowers are red. Comment from the beginning. Truth is clear, poised in silence, I observe the forms of integration and disintegration. One who is not attached to form need not be reformed. The water is emerald, the mountain is indigo, and I see that which is creating and that which is destroyed. And uh, I'll do the other commentary in a moment, but we'll, first we'll go into the world. Into the world. <clears throat> Barefoot and naked of breast, I mingle with the people of the world. My clothes are ragged and dust-laden, and I am ever blissful. I use no magic to extend my life. Now before me, the dead trees become alive. Comment, inside my gate, a thousand sages do not know me. The beauty of my garden is invisible. Why should one search for the footprints upon... Uh, footprints of the patriarchs. I go to the marketplace with my wine bottle and return home with my staff. I visit the wine shop and the market and everyone I look upon becomes enlightened. So this is what reaching the source means. Take any direction, roam the world to its farthest edge, all comes back to where it started. To uh, to blessed emptiness, says Chinese Zen master Xu Yun. Or as the poem reads, the river flows tranquility on and the flowers are red. The last drawing we see is now return to society. When we share the light of our understanding with the people around us, and this is symbolized in the drawing by the presence of, 
of the laughing Buddha, the Buddhai, who brings this simple joy of, of being to all he encounters. Aldous Huxley beautif wrote beautifully about this returning to the world because he now loves, love to, loves to the extent of being identified with the divine object of his love. He can do what, what he likes, for what he likes is what the nature of things like. The nature of things likes. He is found in the company of wine bibbers and butchers. He and they are all converted into Buddhas. For him, there is complete reconciliation and evanescent to the evanescent and through that reconciliation, revelation of the eternal. The beauty of the poems and paintings is that they can be meditated upon endlessly and reveal different aspects of the search for truth. The image of the bull as supreme self or as separate self are like two sides of the same coin. Either you endeavor to tame the sense of separation in order to reveal the true self or go on and abide repeatedly in your true being so that the illusory separate self is swallowed by it. I leave it now to the paintings and poems to speak this for themselves. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, hope you've enjoyed this series. I know I'm uh, running a little late today. I I, I, um, I think it'd be nice to do a little bit of commentary on these last five um, on my own as well. Um, and, you know, I know this is more uh, more religious, I suppose, than what we usually talk about. And I think Mahayana Buddhism is is more uh, is more religious than certainly a, a secular class, or possibly even uh, other forms of Buddhism. Um, so anyway, um, it'd be, yeah, I think it would be nice to de debrief this a, a little bit more. I, I did kind of compress these pretty quickly today. Let's go ahead and get into our practice. So sit comfortably wherever you happen to be today. Begin feeling into that posture that you're in. Having this posture reflecting your determination for today's practice. Sitting up straight, crown of the head towards the ceiling, chin parallel to the floor, jaw relaxed face relaxed, eyes closed if you like, or having a soft gaze about a meter in front of you or about a 45 degree angle downwards. Shoulders relaxed, lower back relaxed, abdominal muscles relaxed. So can you sit up straight and tall, yet be relaxed? And with those abdominal muscles relaxed, maybe you can feel the fullness of the breath in the belly. So if you're having trouble noticing it, maybe placing your left hand on your belly you like, right hand on the heart. Feeling what the body feels like as you breathe. Focusing attention here at this sensation of breath. You can 
Expansion on the inhale. Release, contraction on the exhale. Expansion, contraction. Can you continue following the breath? You can leave your hands on your chest and your belly if you like, especially if that's helping you bring attention to the breath in this moment. as best you can, holding the focus here in this moment, here on this breath that's happening right now. And as you observe the breath that's happening right now, you'll see that no two moments are identical. In each moment, the belly, the chest are changing shape, expanding or contracting. Can you be fully aware of what the body feels like in each and every moment? With curiosity, roll out the red carpet for your experience now. Welcome whatever it is that's happening, whatever busyness the mind may have, the distractions that may be coming. Every time you're distracted, just gently acknowledging that I have been distracted before releasing as best you can, perhaps on your exhale, as we refocus, reorient, return attention to this moment, to this breath.
now where is the mind are you still focused on the present moment are you absorbed into this moment or is the mind distracted now is an opportunity to begin to reorient to start practice after all the past is gone there is only right now focus on this breath focus on this moment Not much longer to go. Let's see if we can focus now just until the end of practice. Less than one minute to go. Stay focused on each breath until you hear the sound of the bell. And now it's time to bring this practice to its close, and I'll close it with three rings of the bell. Thank you for being here. Thanks for joining in practice today. How'd it go? How was your practice? Feel free to uh, write some comments in the chat, and uh, we'll get to those in a, in a few moments. Um, and I suppose first, wow, I, really, um, I, I didn't really talk about any of those five bulls uh, that we just covered. I just kind of went through them and, and um, I'll just say the, the reason and by the way if you missed it if you missed what those were and the pictures that go along and the commentary you can check it out again on the YouTube so Ryan Grimes mindfulness on YouTube you can see the go back and see the beginning of this video which was the the last five bulls of the ten bulls of Zen and the reason I went through them quick rather quickly is because these are 
probably for everybody watching, and including myself, more uh, theoretical, more from the Mahayana Buddhism point of view, uh, maybe not super applicable to those of us who are secular practitioners, but uh, interesting to research nonetheless. I, I think these, these drawings and the poetry that goes with it are really nice. Um, you'll notice on the YouTube videos, the, the thumbnails I've been using are all the, um, the pictures of the, that, that long scroll of the Ten Bowls of Zen that's at um, the was it Museum of, Hi of History or something in, in New York, or the Metropolitan, Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. So, um, yeah, you can, you can check out, I mean, I'm pulling them directly off the Mets website, so you, you can check them out on the website itself, or you can check all those, those thumbnails out. Um, it's really beautiful artwork, and um, the poetry's great, uh, but, you know, the, this, is the, this is the question, and, and I, I suppose this is where I, I really first got so interested in, in the Ten Bulls, is I really felt that at least the, those first five, I felt some direct applicability to my meditation practice. And so I guess that's why I wanted to spend more time on each of those. And then these are more about like, okay, you know, the last five bulls are like the Mahayana view of like, well, now that we've, we've kind of got it, you know, what's, what's the next step after you, after you're there. And interestingly too, I think this is, this has to do more with um, it has to do with more than simply meditation practice. So as we as we expand to these these last the, these last five bowls, I think there's a lot there's more to it than simply about our sitting practice. Okay, I'm gonna have a have a look at the chat. Yes, Sharon says uh, I've enjoyed this. Thanks. Tells me don't give up. Keep meditating. Thanks, Sharon. Thanks so much. Uh, Barbara says thanks for the fascinating series. I appreciate the extra effort. Um, yeah, to share the pictures. In fact, yeah, and I've been looking into it, in fact, um, but haven't really had the time to sit down. There's a piece of software, uh, a streaming a piece of software I can use for streaming that a lot of streamers use. Uh, I just haven't gotten around to it. That would be a lot more fun. I think it'd be, it'd be cooler to share it that way than me holding up an iPad to the camera. Um, but yeah, um, thanks, a lot. thanks, Barbara. Thanks for saying that. Uh, Jean says, my ability to stay focused varied from moment to moment and breath to breath. So it's very focused and some my mind, sometimes in some moments my mind's straight. Thanks, Jean. Um, I can relate to that completely because in today's meditation, that's exactly where I was. I think I had, especially when I had my hand on my chest and my belly, I'm like, oh man, this is, this is it. This is the, you know, this is the focus that I've been hoping for. And then, uh, sure enough, uh, when I started that silent period, I think I lasted about a minute before I was off, off deep in thought about nothing important. You know, what's going on for the rest of my day? I think that's what I, what I was thinking about. Uh, so, we'll, um, yeah, so thanks everybody for joining this series. It's been a really a lot of fun to go through it. Uh, what I'm going to do, well, okay, so first off, Saturday morning, um, Singapore time, maybe Friday night for you, is going to be the one-hour session. We're going to do a one-hour body scan, so feel free to join on that. So I haven't, haven't done a one-hour body scan in a while, which is kind of my favorite long practice to do because you do need a little bit of extra time to do the body scan properly. Uh, that said, if you're a Plus member, I do have a 10-minute version of the body scan uh, as a premium track, so you can, you can try that out and see how that goes. But frankly speaking, from my point of view, I, I really like, I like to spend more time uh, leading that and, and going through it myself when I have the time to do it. A lot of benefits to that. So after Saturday on Tuesday, as we come back, so uh, that that's what I'll do is a little bit more wrap up. I, I really breeze through these these last five bulls pretty fast. Um, as I was researching a little bit about this, something that I didn't know was the, was Aldous Huxley's connection to to Buddhism, and um, you know not I, I, you know. And then this is what I guess I'm I'm learning, and not that he's really a, a full believer. Uh, but he had has some connection and it showed up in his work and I mean I really liked A Brave New World I thought that was a fantastic book 
Um, so I think before next time, I'm going to have a little bit of research about Aldous Huxley and see. Well, maybe, maybe my own my own practice has something in common with, with his. So, um, you know, seeing seeing things again with with that with that questioning inquisitive mind uh, and not taking anything at face value i think that this is really key and and not just meditation practice but in everything uh, especially these days a lots of misinformation lots of youtube or you know or facebook or or any of these uh, instagram showing you images that you that the algorithm knows that you like feeding you news articles that the that the algorithm knows you're gonna go yeah this is right I love you know this is this is the way to go um, so I think now especially questioning ourselves and and you know the first five bulls with that discovery of true self as we're you know, and then this was really the key last time about subjectivity it was that the subjectivity is really the cause of the delusion you know is it possible instead to see things in a more objective way uh, and and really this is this is vipassana right this is where that that what that word is all about is seeing things as they truly are and the more we meditate the more we understand ourselves and uh, see our own subjectivity with that kind of clarity that meditation can give us you know i mean i think this is the one hugest benefit of of meditation is being able to you know, uh, tuning and honing and polishing that ability to see things more objectively. I mean, I think this was the hugest surprise for me as a meditator was just that, wow, I can see myself with so much more clarity and I can actually see myself about to do something stupid and sometimes stop myself every once in a while, stop myself from doing the stupid thing. So keep it up keep practicing for sure you will see the benefit if you keep it up and you have regular practice so uh, figure out how much practice you need each day maybe it's five minutes maybe it's an hour maybe it's two hours i don't know you'll find out thanks for joining today looking forward to leading that longer practice and also looking forward to, to doing some reading and research about aldous huxley i want to share with you on tuesday all right um, I'll, I'll do one, one more uh, look. Gene says, I've been monitoring my ability to stay focused when I'm manic versus when I'm depressed and the various points of the wave in between. Thanks so much for sharing, Gene. I think that's so powerful. Um, and I think that's... Uh, keep us updated. I, I'd really love to hear how, the, how that journey goes for you. All right. Let's share our well, well wishes with ourselves and with everybody else. May I be happy and peaceful. May everyone watching, listening, wherever you are, I wish you all happiness and peace. May all sentient life around the universe, including those who have not yet been born, wish all beings happiness and peace. All right. Until next time, and I'm going to grab Frank. Oh, Frank, say goodbye to everybody. Here he is, looking grumpy as usual. <laughs> All right. See you next time. Bye-bye.